I was born in a small town named Dadab in Kenya, 1998, July 15th. Uh, my parents immigrated from Somalia, 1992, when the Civil War started. My mom and my dad, they talk about the Civil War sometimes uh, with my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Happiness in the City. This is Barbara. And we are here today in this beautiful American city, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And we are celebrating Veterans Day. It is very important to have a sense of a nation because if the nation is unhappy and if the nation in which we are housed, in which we live, is stressed out, then all of that stress um, gets into all members of the nation. So we have to have awareness of the importance of our individual lives and um, communities in which we live, like natural communities, family, many people live with their friends, some people are by themselves and only interact with the neighbors, but um, there is this umbrella organization which is called a nation. And um, a nation is housed within a country. Sometimes a country houses several nations. So the concept of a nation and a country are related, but it's not the same. For instance, we have um, historical knowledge about um, a Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It was one country, but it housed two major nations, Lithuanian, and uh, at that time it was uh, understood as a um, um, nation of ethnic Lithuanians, but also Kievan Rus, Ukrainians, many other uh, regional groups. It was a very complicated nation, and um, it was primarily identified by um, recognition of um, Christian orthodoxy as um, mainstream um, uh, legitimizing unifying church, whereas Polish uh, used um, the definition to legitimize um, the presence of churches uh, Roman Catholic Christianity and for centuries also Judaism. But Judaism had own sovereign presence and power. So it was a very complicated country with many nations. And we are in America and the history of America defines the way we understand nation, but America became nation. But it is different than many uh, nations in Europe because it's a nation that under the umbrella of the nation has many ethnicities, people who came from other countries. Um, and then they assimilated into the uh, nation that houses all immigrants here and uh, also um, has relationship with uh, people who uh, were here before America was created. So it's a very unique nation. And um, as I was preparing today to talk about how we honor veterans of America I was thinking that we have to know the relationship of veterans to the nation in order to understand that they are the ones who are the masters of defense of the nation. Some people do not understand it and they would say that they don't really pay attention to what veterans accomplished, but without the nation, individuals would not have 
any security, any peace, any sense of national community. So when the nation is attacked, the individuals would simply disperse. And veterans defend the nation, so they defend us in cohesion that unifies our presence so that we cannot be removed, dispersed, or dismissed, and simply destroyed. So veterans are very important. And to honor our veterans today, and, um, and I'm actually informally a veteran too, because I was horribly injured during military action while bringing together diverse nations that were at war during Cold War. But I wasn't technically a veteran because I was not military. I was a, a journalist connected to international journalism and um, at that time I worked as a um, employee of the Washington Post and I was horribly injured while reporting uh, martial law situation in Poland. And my pain on day to day, on, on a day like today is um, very um, intense because I suffered as a veteran but I was never recognized as one. But I understand because of that how important veterans are to the nation. And many veterans um, were damaged during their defense of the nation. They were damaged during um, military actions, um, during peacekeeping actions. Many have PTSD situations um, that only recently doctors are um, capable of um, understanding and um, and helping many veterans with. So, though I'm not a veteran technically, but because of what happened to me during martial law in Poland that involved many nations, Russia, Germany, America, many other nations in Europe, in fact, uh, in, in some ways the whole world because the whole world was affected by Cold War and Cold War ended. But the consequences of that uh, conflict are still um, present in many ways in which um, diverse nations communicate with each other. So I actually pray to God for a miracle of peace that will bring divine peace and divine healing uh, to um, generations affected by this horrible Cold War and that, uh, that this healing also will bring um, miraculous transformation in my life that I will be able to uh, continue my life without um, this sense of abandonment, though I was injured, but because of the um, gap in defining suffering of uh, reporters, staff connected to uh, newspapers, uh, people like me, we have no uh, recognition for our pain and suffering. So in this spirit of asking God for his light and life to bring in healing to what hasn't been healed yet from Cold War, I was um, um, looking at the words of the Star Spangled Banner, amazingly beautiful national anthem of the United States of America. Lyrics were written in 1814 by Francis Scott Kay, K-E-Y. And um, I wanted to comment on 
the, the, the amazing words of this um, anthem. Let's, um, let's see if I can do it. Yeah. So you see the words here. The song begins, Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. And when I understood deeply in my soul that in order to have peace, we have to have vision of peace. So this, this, the, the light of peace and the life of peace is what is the foundation for seeing relationships between people in harmony and love because if we don't see we don't have the vision of peace and only have vision of war then we don't even believe that there's an alternative to war and the American national hymn right from the beginning focuses on vision of peace, on vision. Oh say, can you see by the dawn's early light? Again, vision, seeing, early light, seeing, light. What so proudly we hailed on the twilight's last gleaming. So this is affirmation of light, vision of light, vision of peace in nature. And we are part of nature. We are, of course, always asking for God's kingdom to come to us in order to make our nature divine while affirming it. And that is what um, many Christians understand as the grace of the Holy Spirit and presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in our lives. So when you look at those words, you see how powerfully present the recognition and honor of light is in American national anthem, which means that American nation is focused on light. Oh say, can you see? eyes by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming so the whole day is about light our whole um, time of being awakened is to be included in the light, to appreciate light. And then we have whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched. So we again see stars at night. So even at night, American National Anthem focuses on light light of stars and while talking about the fight the war that we watch we don't fight those wars to be in them but to overcome them through vision of peaceful light so we have to look at the beauty, power, love, peace, light and life of American nation in order to have standard of beautiful peace. So um, we have the, the next words over the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare once again, red glare, focus on light. The bombs bursting in air 
gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. What a beautiful metaphor that even in times of darkness, even in moments of inability to see peace and we have to fight in such moments, but then even our weapons give us light and give us, give us purpose to search for vision of peace. And in that fight for liberty, in that fight for love, for life, even our weapons show us light that we are present there through the possibility and ability for us to see our flag even at night, even during darkness, even during fight. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. So you see in this beautiful national anthem of America the honoring of the light, the honoring of the need to have light to show us the way even in darkness. We have to affirm that within us because without vision people perish. Vision is not only the natural ability of our eyes to see but also intelligence, understanding, perception of knowledge, percep perception of reality. You can even um, find confirmation about the importance of light in biblical, biblical writings. Light that comes to us from God, who gave us the nature to perceive light, is the focus of what we can see and the way we can go because we can see the truth. So today as we are dealing with a lot of questions about truth, we have to come back to foundations of what vision of peace should inform our nation so that all members of the nation can live in harmony with each other and that they can see the light and the presence of American nation even in conflicts between each other. In order for us to understand how important veterans are in our lives, we have to acknowledge that what binds us together as a nation is more important than what divides us as individuals or as communities. Because if we only focus on divisions within communities or within um, families or between individuals, then we'll lose the light of the whole that connects us, and that is the light that is the unifying power of the nation. And this is key to create standard of evaluation of what is happening. 
um, as the song says, that without the light allowing us to see even what is happening during a fight, we will not be able to even fight. So today, as the nation of America is undergoing tremendous dangers because of conflict between uh, many individuals and groups, we have to find within our vision and within our hearts connection to the beauty and peace in the light of America's nation. And when we have that foundation and that standard, when we look at everything that is happening between us and around us from the point of view of that security and certainty of the light that guides American nation, then we'll also see the conflicts in the right perspective. Because if a conflict between two individuals or, or two groups would damage the nation as a whole, that wouldn't mean that those two, nation, two individuals are powerful. It would mean that we lost the light vision of our nation. Because if we saw all individuals through the grasp of the national light, we would even not pay attention to that conflict between those two individuals or two, or two groups. So I'm just giving you an example. In order to create national security, we have to focus our attention on what America's national anthem so beautifully uh, phrases. We have to focus on the light of America's nation first. We have to understand how to grasp it, how to receive it, how to understand it. And it is possible. Um, the founding fathers of America had it. They've taught us through their writings, through um, a lot of um, literature that has unfolded from those times, but also we have heritage from England, from what was before America's independence. That heritage is also very valuable, very important. Harvard University was created um, a long time before the um, American independence, and that heritage is still valid and very important. So before we continue with that need to define what justice is, we have to have the light of peace first. And when we have the light of peace, we'll see that within that light of national peace, there's also mercy, there's wisdom, there's flexibility, there's forgiveness, there's also divine presence, and that means forgiveness of sins. And America's nation has the right to receive forgiveness of national sins from God. I ask for it, I ask God to forgive America her sins, to clear the light, to clear the light of America's nation from the sins so that we have more beauty and more virtue and love within that uh, light of America's nation. And I think that's the way to go, that's the direction to go. And when we have that power and that foundation of virtue in the national light of America, 
when we have the strength of vision of peace in America, then we'll also have love within our hearts to ourselves, to God, to each other. And when that love informs our decisions, then we'll be forgiving of other people's shortcomings and failures because we'll also be able to receive that forgiveness for ourselves. And I think that's the way we should continue our um, endeavors into the future because that's what is building our hearts. That is what creates networks of loving connections. And that is what creates patience and removes the raging accusations and the raging need to condemn. Because America is in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there is no condemnation in Christ. So no one in American nation and in the light of American nation is condemned. That's our virtue received from divine grace. Thank you so much for your attention today to those remarks and I uh, bless all veterans, all members of America